this video I'm going to show you how to use a double exposure Photoshop action. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the action on five different examples. So uh, this is the first example that I'm going to use. And the way the action works is you open up your photo, uh, you fill in your subject with a color and just play the action. And here is the effect that the action creates. Okay, so as you can see the action creates this double exposure effect and the action will leave uh, after you play the action, the action will stop once to ask you to choose a second photo that you want to combine with your uh, the first one and the action besides the main double exposure action uh, the, the set also includes uh, over 90 uh, additional uh, actions for adjusting the contrast sharpening and other okay so just gonna close these two windows so after you open your photo, before you use the action, there are a few things that you should check to make sure that the action will run without any errors. So the first thing that you should check is that your photo is a background layer, so it should be called a background and have this little lock icon. So if you have something like this or anything else, just go to Layer, New, and choose a background from Layer. Then click on this little menu icon here, go to Panel Options, and just make sure that the option Add Copy to Copied Layers and Groups is checked. Okay, then go to Image Mode and your photo should be in RGB color mode, 8-bit canon and also check the image size over here so for best results you should use photos that are about from 20 to 3500 pixels wide or high ok so uh, to load the action go to window actions click on this menu icon here, load actions and uh, just choose the action file that can be download click load uh, the action folder will appear here and when you open the folder you will see all the actions here so this is the main double exposure actions and I've got these retouch actions, color actions the lighting actions, the contrast actions, saturation actions, sharpening actions and the vignette actions ok so well, what you have to do is to go to a layer, new layer to create a new layer and name it brush and this is a very important step, so you need to write the brush uh, exactly like this, all at the lowercase, because otherwise the action won't work. I'll click OK. And now you can just press B on your keyboard to select the brush tool. Uh, you can pick some soft brush, choose any color here, color is not matter. And all you have to do is to just brush over your subject, just like this. Okay, and sometimes it's easier just to make a selection of subject and then fill it with the color than to brush it. Okay, so. Uh, how to uh, do that is to select your photo layer you can pick uh, some of the lasso tools or uh, I'm going to use the example the magic wand tool set the tolerance and uh, in this case it's easier for me to select the background than the subject so I have selected the background then you can go to select inverse or press uh, shift control uh, I or shift command I for a Mac to inverse the selection, then you can just gonna smooth the selection a little bit, so go to select, modify, smooth I'm just gonna add uh, a radius 2 pixels and all you have to do uh, is to fill the selection, so now select the brush layer and uh, you can just press shift F5 uh, and just choose a foreground color to fill the selection with a foreground color click OK and now just press Control D or Command D for Mac to deselect okay and all you have to do now is to just select the double exposure action and click play so the action will stop once to ask us to uh, choose uh, the second image that we want to combine with this one so just gonna click play okay here's the message it says now you have to choose the photo that you want to combine with this one after you choose the photo click place and feel free to tr transform it however you want just make sure it covers your subject then just hit enter and the action will continue to work please refer to video tutorial if you need any help here and choose continue to proceed. So you choose continue and uh, you should already have prepared your photo that you want to combine with this one before you play the action ok so this uh, I have uh, choose this one here so just gonna click place ok and now you can transform this photo move it to position however you want if you are resizing the photo make sure you are holding a shift button and dragging some of these corners so you keep the proportions of the photo ok I'm gonna a little bit expand its size, something like this, and you'll be able to move this photo later and transform it. So it's not too much important how you're going to position it first time. Okay. I'm gonna position it like this. So all you have to do now is to just 
uh, hit enter, the action will continue work and uh, it will finish after a few seconds. So just fasten the video here and get back as soon as the action is finished. Okay, so the action has just finished, so just gonna uh, close the actions panel for now and just gonna expand a little bit this uh, layers panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is just gonna hold control and all buttons for PC or command option for a Mac, just click on the little arrow here to just close down these folders. So uh, here we got a, uh, the brush layer we made in the beginning of the video and uh, you, you can, if you wish to just, for example, modify this uh, brush layer, you can just delete this folder, modify it, you can then just play the action again, right? you don't have to make it all over again. And that's why I got this layer here. Uh, so just uh, open the folder here and here we got the four double exporter folders and each of the of these works on a different way. Uh, so some will work for uh, one photo combination and others won't. So what you have to do is to just see which one will work the best with your photo combination, right? So in this case I'm going to use uh, double exporter 3. So just going to open the folder and here's a photo. So as I already mentioned you can, you can now uh, you can transform this uh, photo, right? You can just press Control T on your keyboard, and uh, you can transform it however you want. Okay, just like that. And uh, uh, you got here the. Uh, Double exposure three brightness. So when you double click here, you can here change the brightness of this second photo uh, by using these sliders, and you can return to the default settings by clicking on this little arrow here. Okay, so I'm just gonna double click here, and uh, in this area here, so uh, uh, these settings here are making this blending uh, of the second photo with the first one. So. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's uh, by default it said that in this range of highlights of the underlying, the uh, underlying layer actually of the your first photo, the second photo will blend with. Right? Okay, so your second photo blends with this range of highlights of your first photo, and you can expand that uh, range if you like. Okay, first uh, thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select. Uh, this uh, layer mask of double exposure 3 folder. I'm gonna pick a brush tool, gonna pick some salt brush, set foreground color to black, and just gonna brush with a black color here. So I, I remove the effects from this area, just like this. Okay. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select uh, the, the second photo, press Ctrl T, and just gonna transform it. Something like this. And this layer is linked with other uh, from here. Okay, so if you change your mind, you want to try with some diff uh, other, uh, it's going to transform. Uh, when you transform this photo, others will be transformed as well, okay, from other folders. Okay, here it is. I'm going to actually just increase the size a little bit like this okay and if you start brushing with the white color now here you're just gonna start revealing this photo right and to make sure it doesn't uh, start uh, revealing the photo outside of your brushed area you can just press control or command uh, on the brush layer thumbnail to, to make a selection of it and then just brush with a white color here into this layer mask. Just like that. Okay, so what we got here is the normal photo. Uh, so sometimes when you, uh, these apples, I'm not going to uh, use this layer, and um, uh, uh, this layer has this layer mask, uh, so if I just turn it off now nothing happens, right? Because the layer is not visible because of the layer mask. So when you Press shift button, the, uh, hold the shift and click on this layer mask, which is going to disable this layer mask and this photo will be visible. So use these effects sometimes when you wish to have 
uh, the second photo visible uh, slightly in the background. I'm going to use that in some of the other examples. In this case, I'm not going to use it, and uh, that's why for me it's not important as this photo doesn't cover the whole canvas, all right? Uh, so what we got here is the base photo, okay? Uh, and uh, you can here change the base photo brightness. I'm gonna keep it default in this example. And here we got the background color. So you can choose any color that you like. Okay, so now what I want to do, I want to just make some additional adjustments using these other actions. So first action I'm going to run here is the reduce noise action. So just gonna, all you have to do is to select the reduce noise action and just click play. Okay. And what I'm, what I'm going to do now is just gonna double click on here on the reduce noise to make some additional uh, changes. Okay, so when you click uh, and hold, uh, you will f have the preview of your photo without this filter applied. When you release the click, you will see how it looks after the filter is applied. So I'm just gonna preserve a little bit more details here. Something like this, just okay. And now I want to do, I want to apply a black and white effect to make a better blending. So I'm just going to select the one of the color actions, black and white, click play. Okay, that's it. And I w wish to add some nice color looks. So we can either choose one color look of these, you got a 70 color looks to choose from, or you can just run these uh, render all color looks action. It's going to render all of your color looks, then you can just start turning, on, uh, turning them on one by one, see uh, which one goes best with your photo. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, uh, select the color look 10 and just click play. Okay, here it is. And I'm just gonna uh, drop its opacity. So for each layer that you customize by changing the opacity, is you can click on the word opacity and just drag it to the side, all right, left or right. Or you can click on the letter here and then just move this slider. So I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm just gonna um, lower the opacity a little bit, something like this. And then I'm gonna uh, run additional uh, one more additional action around this one here, and also gonna lower the opacity. So you can run several color looks and change the opacity, so you can combine them and create even more color looks. So now what uh, what I want to do is to apply some lighting actions. So I just wanna boost the highlights of the photo a little bit. So I'm just gonna play a boost highlights action. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the highlights. I'm just gonna play this action. So what you get in this way is with this, uh, uh, with the boost highlights action, you just uh, boost all the highlights, so you expand the highlights area, and then you, when you drop them, you make the, this faded effect, uh, and uh, just make a, a better blending. So, and uh, if you wish to drop the highlights more, for example, you just run this action once more, okay? And then you can change the opacity of this one layer. So just gonna do it something like this. And uh, I'm just gonna add some contrast. So just gonna choose the soft contrast action, click play. Okay, maybe drop the opacity a little bit, something like this. And now what what I want to do is to just uh, uh, fade these blacks shadows in the in the photo. So just gonna uh, play the action, drop shadows. Okay, and. Uh, just gonna add some uh, uh, vibrant saturation to the photo. So just gonna select the vibrant saturation action, click play. Okay, uh, not too much uh, noticeable as the as this photo is almost black and white, right? But it actually made uh, the colors more saturated, uh, exactly as I wanted. So, and uh, finally, what I'm going to do, just gonna uh, use some of the sharpening actions. So you, you can choose for small details, medium, large details. I'm just gonna use a medium details, click play. Okay. And maybe add a black vignette. Just gonna drop the opacity, just gonna make it slightly visible, like this. 
okay I'm pretty much happy with this fact so I have finished with the first example and now I'm going to proceed with demonstrating the actions on the second example okay so here's my second example that I'm going to use so I'm going to create from this photo this effect okay so just gonna close this window so I'm gonna just gonna demonstrate much more after you open your photo the things that you need to check are the first thing is that your photo is a background layer so it should be called a background and have this little lock icon and if it's not just go to layer if it's something like this or anything else just go to layer and you choose a background from layer then go to click on this menu icon panel options make sure you got this uh, option here checked then image mode should be RGB color mode, edge width candle and image size should be between um, from about 20 to 35 we can use uh, 100 pixels but you can also use uh, larger images uh, just don't use too small images uh, so have uh, for better results the range is from your, your photo should be at least about a 20 hundred pixels wide or high okay I can just can make this image a slightly smaller just like this and uh, I already have to load the action uh, to load the action so if you don't have the actions panel here just go to window actions and uh, click on the menu icon load the actions and just load the action that can be downloaded okay so now what I have to do is just go to layer new layer to get a new layer just gonna name it uh, name it brush and as I already said it's a, a very very important step uh, you have to uh, write the word brush exactly like this all letters lowercase because otherwise the action won't work okay and now you have to just pick a brush tool and choose any color just brush for your subject or you uh, make a selection of your subject and fill it with a color so in this case for me it's easier to create a selection of my uh, the subject or actually of the background and then to in, uh, inverse the selection so I get the selection of the subject. So how to do that? Select uh, your photo. I'm going to use a magic pen tool and just going to click here and you're just going to hold the shift button and click here to add this area also to the selection and then you can just uh, go to select inverse or shift control I, uh, shift command I and just going to uh, slightly smooth the selection. Go to, uh, select modify smooth and here add uh, two pixels and I'll just press shift and F5 to fill it with a foreground color like this uh, but uh, actually before you fill it um, the selection with the color you need to select the brush layer so if you fill the selection on this layer the action won't work so you need to ha select the brush layer and then fill the selection shift F5 okay and just press control command D to deselect so you need to have this uh, color fill of your subject no matter if you have brushed or made the selection and then fill the selection, you need to have it on this brush layer. Okay, and all you have to do now is to just select the double exposure action, click play. So here I get a message, and uh, this is gonna uh, choose continue, choose my second photo, and as, uh, as I have mentioned, just hold the shoot button and drag these corners to keep the proportions of the photo, and also you'll be able to. To, uh, to as I have demonstrated before to to later transform this photo so it's not too much important how you're going to position it in the first place okay so just gonna position like this I press enter after you press enter the action will continue wor to work and I'm going to fasten the video here again and get back as the action is finished okay so the action here just finished so I'm gonna hold control alt all buttons for PC or command for a Mac click on this little arrow here just to uh, close down all the folders and it's gonna close the action panel for now so uh, in this example um, I'm going to use uh, double exposure tool and how it works is changes the blending mode here uh, at the screen and what it means that uh, all areas where the the second of this photo that are pure black will be uh, will not be visible and all other uh, highlights will remain the same and all midtones from the between the pure black and the pure white will just become lighter and also got uh, here it said that this layer uh, shadows are blending uh, are actually uh, removing right from this from the second photo you have chosen okay uh, 
so uh, you can here adjust the brightness I'm just gonna leave in default so just gonna move these a little bit like this and uh, uh, also one thing uh, I forgot to mention the first example is when you double click here which is okay you can now replace this photo with any other and uh, after that, uh, that just make sure you have merged all layers into the one and you can just press Control or command s or just go to file save as the, the uh, uh, file save to save this and uh, when you uh, after you save it with the new photo there uh, and then the photo is going to be updated here automatically right so if you want to change the photo you have combined with your first one you don't have to play the action again so just double click on this here and this layer the smart object so all of these uh, layers here are the smart objects right and uh, just uh, place your photo here uh, save it and it's going to be updated automatically here also this layer will be all layers where you have these uh, of the second photo will be updated with a new one you have just uh, placed okay uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna uh, shoot but uh, hold the shoot button and click on, the la uh, on this layer mask here to disable the layer mask and they're just gonna uh, set your opacity to something like this so to reveal the details uh, of the to reveal the second photo in the background just like this okay and uh, that's it and I'm just gonna play some uh, of these adjustments actions okay so uh, I'm going to demonstrate now how this works so I'm going to play this action and I'm going to fasten the video here and get back as soon as the action is finished okay so the action here just finished so the action created is a color logs folder and when you open the folder you can find 70 different color logs that you can choose from so all you have to do now is to just turn on some of these, see how it looks, if you don't like it simply try with another okay so I'm going to use this one here I'm just going to lower its opacity something like this and I'm going to use this one here okay and now what you're going to do is just going to boost the highlights a little bit so you're going to select the boost highlight section click play and the highlights are now uh, too intensive so I'm just going to drop the opacity to this layer to something like this and uh, I'm just going to drop the highlights a little bit so I'm just going to play drop highlight section and going to drop the opacity okay and uh, I'm going to add some contrast, you're going to use the soft contrast action adjust the opacity and uh, I'm going to play the saturation action so when you, when you double click here you can here using the slider change the saturation of your photo I'm going to leave it default and I'm just gonna add the sharpening more so let me show you the difference between these three so you can play the small details it's just gonna uh, just zoom in a little bit so you're going to sharpen the small details this one is gonna sharpen the medium ones and this is going to sharpen the large details okay I gonna use I usually use this one but it depends from the photo to photo okay and you can now lower the opacity by changing the opacity here okay so that's it I have finished with the second example so I'm now going to proceed with the third example okay so here's my third example and I have already checked all the necessary things so what I'm going to do now is just going to create a new layer uh, name it brush and uh, again I'm going to uh, um, create a selection of the background, inverse it to uh, get a selection of the uh, subject and then just fill it with the colors. I have selected my photo layer, uh, I have picked the, the magic pen tool, 
just gonna hold the shift button to make a selection. That's it. And then control command shift I to inverse the selection. I'm gonna go select modify smooth to smooth it a little bit and just shift F5 to fill the selection with a color, but select the brush layer firstly, choose any color, color is not matter, and just fill it like this. Okay, so all I have to do now is just play the action. So I'm gonna choose continue and pick the second photo where to combine with this one. And uh, just gonna expand it. Like this. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter and pass the video again get and get back when the action is finished. Okay, so the action has just finished, so I'm going to close the X panel for now. And to close all the folders, we're gonna press Control Alt Command uh, option. Okay, so uh, in this example I'm going to use the double exposure four. And how this one works is uh, actually it blends uh, the second photo you have chosen with the uh, shadows of the first photo. Okay, and you can modify these. Uh, you can make changes always to these blending settings. Okay, so if you just move this slider like this, as you can see, what you would get is not a smooth uh, blending, right? So then you just hold Alt or Option to split the slider into two parts, and then just uh, make it like this. Okay, it makes a smoother blending and you can experiment and uh, make some additional changes to these sliders here, okay? So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to disable this layer mask so I get the uh, visible second photo of the whole canvas and then just set its opacity to something like this. Okay. And gonna double click here and just gonna uh, move this slider for the mid tones to increase uh, the mid tones a little bit. Okay. And now I'm just gonna use some of these additional actions. Firstly, I'm gonna use a color look. I'm gonna pick this one here. Okay. I'm gonna add a contrast. I'm going to use a uh, hard contrast in the example. Just gonna lower the opacity a little bit. Okay, and uh, I'm going to drop the shadows. So select the drop shadows action. Click play. Uh, I'm going to increase the saturation a little bit. So just gonna place this action. So to change the saturation, double click here and move this slider. And uh, finally, I'm going to add some sharpening. I'm going to uh, use the medium detail sharpening. Okay. And I'm just going to add a black vignette more. So just gonna play this action. And I'm going to lower the opacity. Something like this. Okay, so I have finished with the example as well, so I'm going to proceed with the fourth example. Okay, so here's my fourth example, and I'm going to create from this photo this effect. Okay, so I'm just going to close this uh, document, and uh, uh, I have already checked all the necessary things. So, uh, but I'm going to do uh, another uh, thing that I uh, have been doing for the previous examples, and that I'm going to expand the canvas here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to image, canvas size, and I'm going to check the relative option here. I'm just going to add about uh, 800 pixels in width and uh, about uh, 700 pixels in height. Okay, just going to uh, choose the canvas texture color white and choose OK, like this. And uh, it doesn't matter uh, as uh, this white border, we, uh, we have the white border here like this because 
uh, we are going to have a single color background later okay so now I'm just gonna create a new layer name it brush and I now have to, to fill in the subject with a color and I'm going to try to do it uh, without the uh, brushing like this uh, but to create the selection again okay so I'm going to create my uh, select my photo layer and choose a magic wand tool. I'm gonna use uh, something a lower uh, lower tolerance that he used for the previous examples. And gonna try to select the background like this. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is just gonna pick a lasso tool, and I'm just gonna hold the shift button to add these areas that are not selection to add them into the selection, or to remove them from uh, or to remove uh, some areas. From selection, okay. So to remove them from selection, you use the Alt or Option button, and for adding things to selection, you use the Shift button. So I'm just gonna add all these with a Shift button, just like that. Okay, so just gonna now hold the Alt button to remove some areas from the selection. Okay. So here you're gonna use the Alt button. Okay, just gonna make some uh, small changes here to the selection. Okay, I'm gonna press uh, Control Shift I or Command Shift I to inverse the selection. I'm gonna go to select modify smooth to two pixels to smooth it a little bit. Select my brush layer, choose any color here, and just press Shift F5 to fit like this. Okay, and I'm just gonna select the double exposure action and uh, click play. Choose continue. Here's the photo I'm going to use. So I'm gonna position it like this and again I'm going to fasten the video here and get back as soon as the action is finished and then I'm going to customize the effect. Okay so the action here just finished I'm just gonna close the actions panel and uh, I'm going to close all the folders so control alt or command op option for Mac uh, like this and uh, in this example uh, I'm going to use uh, th this one here the double exposure one okay so and uh, how this one works is, uh, firstly, its mo uh, uh, mode is set to lighting. So what it means that uh, this photo, second photo you have chosen, will be visible on all areas where it is lighter than the first photo. Okay, and it also has these blending uh, settings here, so it's uh, uh, the shadows of this photo are blended with a uh, uh, are blend with the first photo. Okay. So, uh, what I'm going to do uh, here uh, firstly is I'm gonna uh, select this a uh, normal photo layer, uh, the normal photo, uh, and uh, just select this layer mask. Pick a brush tool, set for color, color to white, and uh, I'm, uh, you can then just brush over the areas where you wish to remove the uh, the the second photo. And make uh, actually to remove the first photo and make uh, uh, also different uh, blending. But uh, before that, what I want to do is to just uh, differently position this layer. Okay, I'm just gonna go to Edit Transform and gonna choose the flip horizontal 
top look at like this okay like this just gonna hit enter and uh, now I'm gonna start the neural photo layer just brush with a with a white over here to reveal more of this uh, second photo okay and if we start brushing outside of the subject you'll ma uh, make all the detail visible so to prevent that what you can do is you can uh, hold con uh, control command click on the brush layer thumbnail to make a selection and now if you brush outside of the subject area it, it will not make this layer visible there okay so just like this and uh, now I'm going to select the base photo layer mask and set foreground color to black to remove all these areas okay but you can only brush over the AS we can previously brush here with the white because if I brush somewhere else it's just going to remove it the subject will not be visible okay so I can now just brush inside this area where here brushed with this here with the white okay because when you brush with the black color this layer mask will make this layer in that places not visible okay so then if I don't have this layer it's just gonna have the background color but so I can now brush with the black over here but I have made this layer visible over there so the uh, now in that case uh, you don't get uh, you don't make the background visible in that area, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do now uh, uh, is I'm just going to select this background color layer, select its layer mask. I'm going to use a black color and just going to remove the background color here. So when you remove the background color, you're revealing your original photo. So I'm going to just remove it over here to make these parts of the background visible okay just like that brush with a black where you wish to remove it and uh, to make these blends better what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna drag this layer hold it an out or option and just drag it below excuse me so just do it like this and then just press ctrl alt g or command option g to create a layer mask uh, over this layer, but uh, actually over this layer here, just make sure it's it's out of this folder, so you can create a, a clipping mask or the background layer. So I want to just change a little bit the brightness of this area here. This the uh, that is the actual our uh, background layer, our photo. So double click here, and now just gonna increase the highlights a little bit. Like this. Okay. So you can now see the difference. And what what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna use some of the additional actions. So firstly, I'm going to boost the highlights. Like this. And then, and then I'm just gonna draw the highlights to make this faded effect. Okay, you see the difference. And uh, I'm gonna drop the shadows just a slightly, so I'm gonna lower the opacity. Okay, and I'm gonna add some uh, soft contrast. and uh, I'm going to add a color look I'm gonna pick this one here okay and uh, I'm just gonna add some uh, vibrance and saturation so I'm gonna double click here and make these settings and now uh, finally just gonna add some 
uh, sharpening so it, in this case I'm going to use the small detail sharpening and add a, uh, a black vignette I'm just gonna set uh, a lower opacity until I and that's it okay so now uh, I am going to proceed with a uh, last example okay so here's my last example so I'm going to create from this photo this effect so as you can see there is no double exposure effect and uh, what I want to show in this example is how can you use the uh, the adjustment section without the double exposure effect okay so just gonna uh, close this window so if you don't want to uh, use the double exposure effect you just wish to make uh, the adjustments like sharpening, contrast, color and other uh, you then uh, you don't have to create a brush layer so what you have to do is to just create one blank layer okay you can click on this icon or just go to layer new layer the name is doesn't matter you should just make one uh, blank new layer and then you can just select any of the adjustment action that you want and click play okay so first I'm gonna just add some nice color looks so just gonna use this one here okay and I'm just gonna boost the highlights and what I'm going to do is as the in these areas already uh, the photo had already very intensive highlights now when I have increased the highlights of the overall photo this one here are too much intensive so you just select this layer mask pick a brush tool set from ground color to black to some soft brush and you can just brush with the areas where you wish to remove this layer so it doesn't take effect okay so if I just now turn it off and don't you see that nothing changes here because this layer is not visible in those areas or you can brush with the white if you wish to make it visible that areas again okay so here is how the layer mask looks. So if I just now turn this layer off and on, you see that these highlights will remain the same. Maybe just can brush a little bit more over here. Okay, that's it. I'm now just gonna uh, reduce the noise a little bit. So I'm gonna select the reduce noise action, click play, and I'm going to double click here to make some changes. Uh, I'm going to preserve more details and uh, reduce color noise I'm gonna set some a smaller value just like this okay and uh, now just gonna add some contrast soft contrast okay and lower the opacity and uh, I'm going to add the vibrance and the saturation okay and finally I'm going to add sharpening I'm gonna use a medium detail sharpening and that's it and let's just quickly check the before and after so this is the before and this is the after effect we have created in just a few seconds okay so I hope you understood everything uh, but if you still need any help or got any questions feel free to contact us anytime via our support page Thanks for watching.